Dive into the captivating realm of cinema where hidden details often lie in plain sight, silently adding depth and complexity to the films we love. This video uncovers 20 such details, exploring them in fascinating detail. Number 1. Hidden Foreshadowing in Fight Club In David Fincher's Fight Club, an intricate dance of foreshadowing and misdirection leaves viewers astonished. During a close inspection, keen observers can notice a subliminal detail. An image of Brad Pitt's character Tyler Durden flashing on the screen several times before the character is formally introduced. The first instance occurs when the protagonist, played by Edward Norton, is at his doctor's office. Tyler Durden appears for a single frame, which is roughly 1 24th of a second. Throughout the film, this happens five more times. In his office, in a commercial, at the photocopier, and during meetings. These instances hint at Tyler's existence and his relationship to Norton's character long before the dramatic revelation, underlining the split personality aspect of the plot. Moreover, a scene exists where Norton's character is on the phone, and the camera pans to a notice board behind him. On it, a warning against forming imaginary friendships with made-up characters is placed prominently. This turns out to be another foreshadowing of the plot twist, subtly embedded within the mise-en-scene. Number 2. The Recurring Coffee Cup in Pulp Fiction Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction is known for its twisted narrative and memorable dialogues. However, a recurring detail largely unnoticed is a coffee cup. In almost every scene involving a character drinking coffee, the same blue and white coffee cup appears. For example, in the scene where Jules and Vincent are discussing Amsterdam's McDonald's, the camera frequently cuts back to the duo drinking coffee from those identical cups. Additionally, the same cup is seen again in the scene where Jimmy, played by Quentin Tarantino himself, offers Jules and Vincent coffee in his kitchen. Not only does the cup appear in his home, but it also pops up later at Monster Joe's truck and tow, adding a peculiar continuity in the otherwise non-linear narrative. The coffee cup is not necessarily symbolic or integral to the story. Instead, it serves as a testament to Tarantino's meticulous attention to detail and his unconventional storytelling style. This quirk might also be a nod to Tarantino's love for diner scenes and coffee, a theme recurrent in many of his films, including Reservoir Dogs and Death Proof. Thus, the simple detail of the blue and white coffee cup, despite being easily overlooked, subtly strings together distinct narrative threads in Pulp Fiction. Number 3. The Continuous Breath in 1917 Sam Mendes's war epic, 1917, stands out for its technical bravado. Presented as a continuous shot, the film's unbroken visual perspective is widely appreciated. However, a lesser-known detail relates to the continuous breath sounds of the lead characters. Throughout their perilous journey across the war-ravaged landscapes, Lance Corporal's Schofield and Blake's breathing can be constantly heard. It's most noticeable when they're running, under stress, or when the surrounding environment is particularly quiet. This effect was achieved through meticulous sound design and serves a dual purpose. It adds realism and subtly reminds the audience of the character's constant presence and humanity amidst the chaos of war. A notable instance is during Schofield's solitary trek through the abandoned German trenches. As he navigates through the eerie silence, his breath becomes the auditory focal point, accentuating the tension and his vulnerability. The breath essentially becomes a character in itself, silently narrating the emotional landscape of the film. Number 4. Real-Time Aging in Boyhood Richard Linklater's groundbreaking film, Boyhood, chronicled the growth of a young boy Mason into adulthood. The unique and fascinating aspect of the film lies not just in its narrative, but in the real-time aging of the characters, a detail often overlooked due to its seamless integration. Filmed over 12 years, the cast, including Mason, played by Eller Coltrane, age naturally on screen. This allowed the film to realistically portray the progression of life, capturing the subtle physical changes that come with growing up. From Mason's voice deepening to his height increasing, the changes we see are real, not simulated by makeup or CGI. Additionally, the detail extends to Patricia Arquette and Ethan Hawke, who play Mason's parents. They too age naturally throughout the course of the film, adding to the authenticity. Their characters not only develop emotionally and intellectually, but also physically. 
It's an incredible detail that speaks to Linklater's commitment to realism and the film's unique production process. It's a detail easily missed because it's so intrinsic to the movie that it doesn't seem like a detail at all, yet it contributes to the profound impact of boyhood. Number 5. Sign Language in A Quiet Place John Krasinski's post-apocalyptic horror film A Quiet Place is renowned for its ingenious use of silence, but a crucial detail that often goes unnoticed is the depth of its sign language communication. The family in the film, being in a world overrun by creatures sensitive to sound, predominantly uses sign language for communication. The detail here is the character-specific sign language. Each family member, based on their personality and situation, uses a distinct signing style. For instance, Reagan, the deaf eldest daughter, uses more aggressive and faster signing, reflecting her strong-willed character. On the other hand, her younger brother Marcus uses more cautious and hesitant signs, embodying his fearful nature. Their father signs in a clear, deliberate manner, reflective of his protective and loving nature. This characteristic is especially vital in pivotal scenes where words are left unsaid. A notable instance is when the father signs, I love you, to Reagan and Marcus before his heartbreaking sacrifice. The emotional intensity carried through the sign language makes this scene one of the most memorable moments in the movie. Number 6. Unseen Heroes in Spider-Man Homecoming Spider-Man Homecoming breathed new life into the well-known hero, with Tom Holland bringing a fresh take to Peter Parker. But there is a detail that many might have missed, the almost invisible presence of other Marvel heroes. Eagle-eyed viewers can spot Captain America's shield and Thor's magic belt, Meganyord, in the background during a scene in which Peter and his friend Ned explore the Department of Damage Control's secret storage facility. These brief glimpses link Spider-Man's solo adventure to the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. The film also subtly hints at the existence of Iron Man. This is evident not only through Tony Stark's mentorship role, but also in the technology Peter uses, such as his suit designed by Stark. However, Stark Industries' impact is more deeply entrenched than initially noticeable. For instance, the villain, Vulture, amasses his power through salvaging and repurposing technology from Stark Industries. Another small detail is the blink-and-you-miss-it appearance of Howard Stark in a mural at Peter's school. This again subtly reminds viewers of Spider-Man's place within the expansive Marvel Universe. These details, although minor and easy to miss, greatly contribute to the depth and continuity of the MCU narrative. Number 7. The Always Visible Villain in No Country for Old Men the Coen Brothers' adaptation of Cormac McCarthy's novel No Country for Old Men is known for its thrilling cat-and-mouse chase. One detail that often goes unnoticed is the omnipresence of the antagonist, Anton Chigurh, played by Javier Bardem. The filmmakers use subtle visual cues to indicate Chigurh's presence or influence in scenes, even when he is not physically present. For instance, in several scenes, the filmmakers use reflections to hint at Chigurh's presence. In one scene, the reflection of his face can be seen in a television screen, while in another, his silhouette is visible in a car's side mirror. Moreover, the sound of his oxygen tank and his signature weapon, a captive bolt pistol, are audible in the background at various points, again signaling his constant presence. Even his coin, a major symbol of his philosophy of chance appears in scenes without him. These details cleverly underline Chigurh's role as an omnipresent threat. He is, in essence, a force of nature, continuously lurking in the background and influencing the course of the narrative. Number 8. Numeric Symbolism in The Matrix The Matrix, directed by the Wachowski siblings, is filled with intricate details that tie into its overarching themes. Among these is the recurring symbolism of numbers, particularly the number 101. This number is a binary digit in computer programming, aligning with the film's digital reality theme. However, its presence is subtly woven into the film in various ways. For instance, Neo's room number is 101. Similarly, the highway on which the notorious chase sequence in The Matrix Reloaded happens is also named 101. Furthermore, the number can be seen as a metaphorical symbol for Neo's journey. In binary code, 101 represents the number 5, 
which is often associated with harmony and balance in numerology, echoing Neo's role as the One, bringing balance to the Matrix. Another layer to this detail is that 101 can also symbolize transition or a shift from one state to another in the binary system, further reflecting Neo's transformation throughout the series. These references to 101 are easy to miss, but lend a fascinating depth to the films. They are a testament to the Wachowskis' attention to detail and the intricate layers of meaning woven into the Matrix trilogy. Number 9. Subtle Horror Details in The Shining Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is a masterclass in horror, not least because of the subtle details that contribute to its pervasive unease. One of these is the creative use of spatial incongruities within the Overlook Hotel. At first glance, the hotel's layout seems ordinary. However, on closer inspection, the architecture of the hotel becomes a labyrinth of impossibilities. For instance, Ullman's office has a window that shouldn't exist according to the floor plan of the hotel. Similarly, the interior of room 237 is larger than its exterior dimensions. These spatial discrepancies create an unsettling atmosphere and an underlying feeling of something being off, even if the viewer can't pinpoint exactly what. They subtly contribute to the film's psychological horror, insinuating that the hotel itself is an entity defying the laws of nature and reality. Moreover, these details foreshadow the final act where Jack Torrance gets lost in the hotel's maze-like garden, symbolizing his descent into madness. These minute details, easily overlooked, make The Shining a continually rewarding film to dissect. Number 10. Consistent color schemes in The Grand Budapest Hotel Wes Anderson's The Grand Budapest Hotel is renowned for its vivid and meticulous aesthetics. Among these details, one that stands out is the consistent use of a distinctive color palette. Throughout the film, three main colors dominate, pink, purple, and teal. These colors are not only present in the hotel's architecture, but are also consistently reflected in costumes, props, and even food. The pink Mendel's boxes, Agatha's purple dress, and the teal uniforms of the hotel staff form a visually appealing and harmonious blend. The color continuity does more than just pleasing the eyes. It plays a pivotal role in the film's storytelling. The color scheme changes with the eras. In the scenes set in the hotel's glory days, the colors are vibrant, while in the later years they are desaturated, mirroring the hotel's decline. Moreover, the color palette also helps in characterization. For instance, Zero, the protagonist, is often associated with the color purple, a hue that signifies nobility and ambition, echoing his journey in the narrative. This consistency in color use, while easily taken for granted, adds a unique visual language to the film, enhancing its narrative and emotional depth. The careful color coordination demonstrates Anderson's meticulous directorial style and his remarkable attention to detail. Number 11. Accurate Science in Interstellar Christopher Nolan's space epic Interstellar is renowned for its mind-bending plot and stunning visuals. However, a detail that often goes unnoticed is the accurate representation of scientific concepts specifically relating to astrophysics and quantum mechanics. The film employed physicist Kip Thorne as a consultant to ensure the depiction of wormholes, black holes, and the effects of gravity were scientifically plausible. One noteworthy detail is the visual representation of the black hole, Gargantua. The swirling disk of glowing gas around it accurately illustrates an astrophysical phenomenon known as an accretion disk. Furthermore, the concept of time dilation on the water planet Miller, where an hour equates to seven years outside its gravitational pull, is a concept derived directly from Einstein's theory of relativity. It's also worth noting that the Tesseract scene, while seeming fantastical, was intended to visualize the theoretical concept of a five-dimensional space. These scientific details not only add authenticity to the film, but also serve the narrative, influencing the plot in significant ways. The meticulous adherence to scientific principles, even in a science fiction setting, sets Interstellar apart and adds a layer of intellectual engagement to the film's viewing experience. Number 12. Timeless Props in Forrest Gump The iconic film Forrest Gump chronicles the life of its namesake character through several decades of American history. One less obvious detail is the clever use of timeless props that serve as a subtle thread connecting Forrest's various adventures. 
Forrest's bench, his box of chocolates, and his running shoes are consistent elements present in each era he lives through. These props, while simple, become significant symbols within the narrative. They bear witness to Forrest's life journey and often serve as a comforting constant amidst the changing times. For example, the bench on which Forrest recounts his life story becomes a symbol of his simplicity and his willingness to share his experiences with anyone who will listen. Similarly, his box of chocolates becomes a metaphor for the unpredictability of life. His Nike Cortez running shoes are another recurring prop. They're not just a testament to Forrest's love for running, but also symbolize his journey through life, literally and metaphorically. These shoes are present in many significant moments, such as when he breaks free of his leg braces when he runs across the country, and finally when he mows the lawn of his home in Greenbow, Alabama. These details, while small, lend a profound thematic continuity to the film, subtly anchoring the narrative as it navigates through different eras of Forrest's life. They may easily be overlooked, but add significantly to the charm of Forrest Gump. Number 13. Continuity Error Turned Plot Point in Back to the Future The beloved time travel movie Back to the Future is replete with ingenious details, but one stands out for its unintentional origin. The film's creators turned a potential continuity error into a key plot point, the changing sign of the Twin Pines Mall. In the beginning, Marty McFly meets Doc at the Twin Pines Mall, where he first encounters the time-traveling DeLorean. After traveling back to 1955, Marty accidentally runs over one of two pines on a farm. Upon returning to the present, the mall's sign has subtly changed to Lone Pine Mall. The change could have been a mere continuity error, but the filmmakers cleverly incorporated it into the narrative, turning it into a testament to the effects of time travel and a subtle nod to the attentive viewers. This detail not only enriches the narrative, but also highlights the film's thematic exploration of cause and effect and the consequences of altering the timeline. Number 14. Real Injuries on Screen in Django Unchained Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained features a detail that was not planned, but ended up intensifying one of its most dramatic scenes. This was the real-life injury of actor Leonardo DiCaprio, which was included in the final cut of the film. During the dinner scene, Calvin Candy, played by DiCaprio, slams his hand on the table, unintentionally shattering a glass and cutting his hand in the process. DiCaprio continued the scene, despite the injury, even using the bleeding hand to further intensify the confrontation. The detail has since become a widely known trivia point about the movie. It showcases not only DiCaprio's dedication to his craft, but also Tarantino's unconventional directing style, unafraid to incorporate unexpected elements into his films. Number 15. Unplanned Moments in The Dark Knight Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight is packed with memorable scenes, but one detail that stands out was not scripted the malfunctioning Batpod scene featuring Heath Ledger's Joker. In the climactic chase sequence, the Joker is left in the middle of the street after Batman disrupts his truck with the Batpod. The Joker begins to shoot at the oncoming Batpod, but just before the Batpod reaches him, it unexpectedly veers off and crashes. As a result, the Joker is left standing in the street with a bemused look. The interesting detail here is that the Batpod was actually supposed to hit its mark. However, due to a malfunction, it missed, leading Ledger to improvise the Joker's reaction. Ledger, staying in character, created a moment of spontaneous humor that fit the Joker's character perfectly. This unplanned detail not only adds to the Joker's unpredictability, but also showcases Ledger's remarkable ability to embody his character. It's a testament to the unpredictable nature of filmmaking and how unplanned moments can sometimes become the most memorable ones. Number 16. Alien Languages in Star Wars The Star Wars universe is famous for its rich world-building, including the creation of various alien languages. While these languages might seem like random gibberish, they are in fact carefully crafted systems of communication. Languages like Hutezi, spoken by Jabba the Hutt, and Iwokizi, spoken by the Ewoks, have their own unique vocabularies and grammatical rules. Similarly, the droid language, binary, though it mainly consists of beeps and boops, conveys meaning based on intonation and context. The detail here lies in the consistency and complexity of these languages. 
Each one is distinct and adds depth to the species that speak them. They are also used consistently throughout the film series and extended universe, maintaining the immersive authenticity of the Star Wars world. The creation of these alien languages, while a detail easy to overlook, significantly contributes to the richness and believability of the Star Wars universe. It demonstrates the extraordinary lengths taken in crafting the intricate details of this beloved franchise. Number 17. Hidden References in Toy Story The Toy Story franchise is known for its clever writing, rich characterization, and hidden Easter eggs. Throughout the series, the animators have snuck in several references to other films and inside jokes that add an extra layer of enjoyment for those who notice them. These details don't alter the narrative, but they do enhance the viewing experience for those in the know, offering a bit of extra fun to be had in spotting them. They are a testament to the creator's meticulous attention to detail and the joy they take in crafting their films. Number 18. The True Timeline of Memento Christopher Nolan's Memento is an intricate puzzle of a movie, its plot unfolding in a non-linear structure that mirrors the protagonist's anterograde amnesia. However, the subtlest detail in the film is the actual chronological order of events. The film alternates between black and white sequences, moving forward in time and color sequences moving backward. However, at one point, the film transitions from black and white to color in the same scene, indicating the point where the two timelines meet. This scene involves Leonard, Guy Pierce taking a photo of Teddy, Joe Pantoliano. This cleverly constructed timeline plays into the film's central themes of memory, truth, and self-deception. It is a testament to Nolan's innovative storytelling and his ability to weave complex narrative structures. This minute detail, while often overlooked, forms the crux of understanding Memento's complex narrative and adds to the film's rewatchability. Number 19. Microscopic Details in Ant-Man Ant-Man brings a unique perspective to the superhero genre by playing with scale. The film stands out for its microscopic details when the protagonist, Scott Lang, shrinks down to the size of an ant. The production team paid great attention to how the world would look from a tiny perspective. For instance, when Ant-Man is tiny, normal-sized objects around him are out of focus, imitating the depth of field of a macro camera lens. Moreover, the texture and material properties of things become more prominent, like the fibers in the carpet or the tiny scratches on a vinyl record. Even the soundscape changes when Ant-Man shrinks, with regular sounds becoming distorted and echoing to mimic how sound waves would hit a tiny eardrum. Also, ant-sized conversations between Ant-Man and his ant allies are portrayed with subtitles, adding another microscopic detail into the mix. Even the soundscape changes when Ant-Man shrinks, with regular sounds becoming distorted and echoing to mimic how sound waves would hit a tiny eardrum. Also, ant-sized conversations between Ant-Man and his ant allies are portrayed with subtitles, adding another microscopic detail into the mix. These meticulous details not only enhance the believability of Ant-Man's tiny adventures, but also add a layer of visual and auditory uniqueness to the film. These details might be microscopic in scale, but their impact on the film's viewing experience is massive. Number 20. The Mathematical Details in A Beautiful Mind The biographical drama, A Beautiful Mind, chronicles the life of John Nash, a brilliant mathematician who suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. An easily overlooked detail is the accurate representation of complex mathematical concepts in the film. For authenticity, the film had a math consultant to ensure the accuracy of the equations shown on screen. The scribblings seen on windows and blackboards are not random, but legitimate mathematical formulas. They are an accurate reflection of Nash's work on game theory, which earned him the Nobel Prize in economics in 1994. In addition to accurately representing Nash's work, the film also used mathematics to symbolize his mental state. For instance, Nash's hallucinations are introduced just as he is trying to develop a revolutionary theory, indicating the thin line between his genius and his madness. These details, while easily missed by those not familiar with advanced mathematics, play a crucial role in the film.
They not only add authenticity, but also contribute to the narrative and character development, bridging the gap between the abstract world of mathematics and the human drama at the heart of a beautiful mind. A beautiful mind.